Samuel Houston was born in Rockbridge County, Virginia on March 2nd of 1793. His father's name was also Samuel Houston, making Sam a junior. His mother was Elizabeth Paxton. Together, this couple would have nine children. Money was always a tight issue when considering that you had to feed these nine children. So the Houston family planned to sell their land and join the frontiersmen in Tennessee to try to scrape out a better living there. In 1806, these plans would need to be put on the back burner when Sam Houston Sr. unfortunately passed away. This only paused the Houston family though, who continued the process of selling their land in Virginia for new, cheaper land in Tennessee. With help from her children, Elizabeth Houston then set up a small farm near Maryville, Tennessee, a small town where the Houston family kids would run a little store. In his early life, Sam Houston could be described as something of an outcast. As a teenager, he would explore the edges of the frontiers alone, perhaps encountering the local Cherokee tribes that lived just on the peripheries of America. Sam did not even believe in his family's Presbyterian Christianity. And like all good outcasts, Sam rejected most of his schooling in an effort to self-educate himself. He read books from his father's library, like Jedediah Morse, the father of Samuel Morse, the later inventor of the telegraph. Jedediah Morse, on the other hand, was a famous American geographer, which makes complete sense when considering how much Sam loved to explore the frontiers of America. When Sam was only 16, he decided to join another group who were viewed as an outcast by other Americans. So he ran away from home in 1809 and went to Hiawassa Island which was located at the conflux of the Tennessee and Hiawassa rivers. On this island, a Cherokee tribe of Native Americans accepted the 16-year-old boy as one of their own. The chief of this tribe was named Chief Jolly, and eventually Sam would learn the Cherokee language and be fully integrated into the tribe with his own Cherokee name, Raven. Sam would live the life of a Cherokee Indian for three years, until 1812, when he returned to Maryville, Tennessee as a much more rugged and experienced 19-year-old man. Then, Sam must have had a change of heart about education and religion, as he attended the Western Theological Seminary, where he was taught by its founder, Isaac Anderson. The adventurous spirit of Sam Houston could only be quelled for a short time. He had found another opportunity in 1812, specifically in the War of 1812. This war pitted the new United States of America against its old colonial owner, the British. In 1813, he joined the 39th Infantry Regiment, where he impressed the Lieutenant Colonel, Thomas Benton, who quickly promoted the 20-year-old Sam Houston to 3rd Lieutenant. By 1814, this regiment was assigned under the command of General Andrew Jackson, a man who can be described as an opposite to Houston in the Department of Feelings towards Native Americans. This can be seen as the only reason why he joined Andrew Jackson's regiment was due to a new war that had started with a group of Native Americans known as the Red Stick Creeks. Lieutenant Houston would find himself in a favorable spot though, as his Cherokee brethren would help Andrew Jackson in this war. The multilingual Houston probably spent ample time in this war conversing with Cherokee Indians. After all, he was one of them. In 1814, after a few months of being in Jackson's army, Houston would find himself in the thick of the Battle of Horseshoe Bend. By the end of the battle, 800 of the 1,000 Cherokee warriors lay dead. Only 47 Americans would find themselves in that same position and 159 Americans would be wounded, with Sam Houston being among them. He was wounded badly, and many doctors saw little hope for the 20-year-old lieutenant. Miraculously, though, he survived, and returned to Maryville to heal from his wounds. While he was healing, Houston would earn the rank of second lieutenant for the bravery that he had shown. In 1817, a few years after the end of the War of 1812, General Jackson would give Houston a job that would test the allegiances and beliefs of him. Jackson assigned him to remove the Cherokee from Eastern Tennessee. This made sense as Houston tried to relieve the worries of his fellow Cherokee. Houston would dress in traditional native clothing when talking to the Cherokees. Raven, as he was called by the natives, showed up to the wrong meeting. He was still dressed in his native attire when meeting with the Secretary of War, John C. Calhoun. This big bird looking, pro-slavery believing, piece of plantation owning garbage is one of the worst American politicians of all time, which is why it makes me very happy that Sam Houston hated him. After showing up to the meeting, John Calhoun reprimanded him for being too pro-Cherokee. He probably was, after all, and the next thing that he did would prove that even more. Sam joined the Cherokee in 1818 after he resigned from the army to help them by resettling in Arkansas. Arkansas happened to share a border with the neighboring province of Texas that was currently revolting. The Mexican War of Independence for Spain was in full swing, and they would fully gain that independence by 1821. After helping the resettling Cherokee, Sam would return to Tennessee this time going to the up-and-coming city of Nashville. In Nashville, Sam blazed through law school, finishing it in under a year, and opened his own law practice in 1819 near Lebanon, Tennessee. The charismatic and loved Houston was then, in a flurry, appointed to the district attorney of Nashville and major general of the Tennessee militia. Tennessee was also home to another influential American, Andrew Jackson, 
These two wartime buddies would also join the same political party, the early Democratic Party that was newly founded by Martin Van Buren. With backing from Andrew Jackson, Sam Houston ran nearly unopposed as a member of the Tennessee House of Representatives. Of course, he would win this in 1823 and joined his fellow representatives in Washington, D.C. Uniquely, his first speech addressing the House would be to support the nation of Greece, who is currently revolting and fighting for their independence from the Ottoman Empire. Sam would eventually repay the backing that Jackson had gave him and advocate for Andrew Jackson in his 1824 presidential campaign that he would lose to John Quincy Adams. The mutual respect that Houston and Jackson shared for one another would once again be shown in 1827. Jackson would then support Samuel Houston in the election for the governor of Tennessee. As governor, Houston would support the infrastructure of Tennessee by connecting the many rivers of Tennessee with the construction of canals. As governor, he returned the favor once again to General Jackson in the 1828 presidential election. This election would see the first Democratic president win, with Andrew Jackson winning the majority of votes. A year later in 1829, the 36-year-old Houston decided to settle down and marry Eliza Ann in January of 1829. This would only last three months, as it was rumored that Eliza Allen was in love with a different man. This devastated Houston who couldn't take the new complicated and divorced hole that he found himself in. Houston longed for an escape, away from the deceitful politicians of Tennessee and away from his divorce. So, Sam resigned as governor, donned his old Native American clothes, and took back his other name, Raven. Raven then set off to join with the Cherokee, who he had helped to resettle in Arkansas. 1829 was a bad year to do this, though. Houston's old wartime and political friend Andrew Jackson would start to show his true colors. His anti-Indian stance would culminate again when he ordered for the removal of the Cherokees once again. But he didn't just order for the Cherokees to remove themselves from American land. No, he ordered for the removal of thousands of Indians from as far away as Michigan to the Seminoles of Florida. The 1830 Indian Removal Act would see these natives all join together in mostly what is the modern day state of Oklahoma. Sam Houston tried to alleviate the stress of his Cherokee brethren by going to Washington DC to try to gift the Cherokees with food rations on their westward journey. This would fail, and thousands of Cherokees would die on the Trail of Tears due to hypothermia and starvation. Houston would find himself in D.C. again in 1832. This time, a congressman named William Stanberry accused Houston of illegal collusion with the Jackson administration. Houston would write to Stanberry multiple times, and every time he would get no response. Having been fed up with politicians and Andrew Jackson's anti-Indian policies, Sam Houston snapped. Houston would end up beating Stanberry with a cane for his trash-talking nature. Sam was left satisfied by this, but the U.S. government was not amused. They brought him to a trial on the House of Representatives. Here, Houston would once again be reprimanded by the U.S. government. By a surprisingly close vote of 106 to 89, Houston lost and was forced to pay $500. What Houston wanted now was a new path in life. So he joined the hundreds of Americans who had began settling in the Mexican province of Texas. The Mexican government for a while now had started to invite Americans like Stephen Austin to settle on their sparsely populated territory. In December of 1832, Houston found himself in this Mexican territory. Sam was appointed to represent Nacogdoches at the Texan 1833 convention that tried to convince Mexico to make Texas one of their states. Mexico would refuse and by 1834, President Santa Ana captured and arrested the Texan leader, Stephen Austin. It didn't take long after this for the American settlers in Texas to revolt against their Mexican government. Just a year later in 1835, Sam Houston became Major General Sam Houston, the highest ranking officer in the hastily assembled Texan army. In 1836, Texas officially became their own country. Modeled after America, they became the Republic of Texas. Soon after this, the Alamo would come under siege and Major General Houston tried to send soldiers to the little makeshift fort, but they were too late. Is there even a successful Texan revolution without the martyrdom of the Alamo though? After all, the trademark saying of the Texan revolutionaries is, remember the Alamo. Later, in the year of 1836, Santa Ana caught up with Houston's force of 783 men and trapped them in the confines of a marshy swamp. This might have been the plan after all, as the Mexican soldiers, reassured by their soon-to-be victory, stayed and camped on the outskirts of the swamp. This mistake would give Houston an opportunity to sneak attack the Mexican camp and eventually capture Santa Ana at the Battle of San Jacinto. The Texans only agreed to release Santa Ana after he agreed to make peace with the newly formed Republic of Texas. Houston would receive another battle wound. This time his ankle was shattered and he would be forced back to America for medical treatment. Upon returning to Texas later in 1836, Houston would run to be the first president of Texas. Samuel Houston would win this election and take office on October 22nd of 1836. Becoming the first president meant that Sam had a lot of work cut out for him. 
Houston was forced to deal with the debt that Texas had occurred during their revolution. Sam Houston also wanted to join the United States, but he was refused by his friend Andrew Jackson. Jackson did not want to unbalance the slave and non-slave states, so he did not agree to the Texan annexation. But he did try to help his old friend. At the end of Jackson's second term, his last decision as president was to recognize the Republic of Texas as a true country, which was definitely a step forward. Houston wanted to regain good relations with Mexico and was unsurprisingly pro-Indian. Well, that is until his buttons were pushed. In 1838, the Cordova Rebellion would start. When Sam Houston heard of this in his new capital city of Houston that was named after himself, he sent the Texas Rangers to deal with it. Sam had created the self-supplying military force so that he could cut back on military spending to try to pay off the Texan debt. The Rangers would put down the Cordova Rebellion, which was a Mexican-fueled attempt to win back Texas with help from local Kickapoo Indians. For Cherokee natives, he tried to gain alliances and give them favorable treaties, which was widely unpopular in Texas. Sam Houston was even progressive enough to support the end of Texan slavery, but this too was unpopular in Texas. In 1838, Houston would leave office, and in his place, Maribo B. Lamar would be selected as the second president of Texas. 